so sick of decaf. So what's new, Sachi? You seem a little distant. I had a sex dream last night. Has me a little concerned. Sex dream? Was it about Bill? Oh, fucking. No. It was about Dick Cheney. You had a sex dream about Dick Cheney? Oh my god. I know. Well, you know what? You have been under a lot of stress lately. What, with the, uh, with the new house and Bill losing his job and the car accident? And what else? My mother dying. All those little things add up. Mm. Still. Dick Cheney. I know. He's really good. Really? Mm -hmm. Very gentle. Huh. Well, I wouldn't have thought. He seems kind of mean on television. Mm. That's just the whole tough, tender dichotomy. Mm. And not all that into foreplay. Oh, you'd be surprised. Ooh. So, where was this? The White House? No, Pathmark. I was in the produce section, see, and I tried to shoplift a bag of baby carrots for some reason. Well, because they were so expensive. They were like $20. $20 for a bag yeah. of carrots. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, it was a dream. But, well, I never go to Pathmark anymore. One time I forgot my shopper's card, and they refused to give me a discount. I used to like their garlic bread, but no more. Anyway, these carrots were prohibitively expensive but I really needed them because I was making stew. In this weather? It, it was a dream, Joanna. Anyway, so I stuck the bag of carrots under my hat for some reason, and I got caught by the produce manager, and he was Dick Cheney. Wow. Huh. Was he wearing, like, a Pathmark coat or something? Yeah. And, a, you know, one of those name tags which said Dick on it. <laughs> and he said, Madam, you have carrots under your hat. And I said, well, yes, but I fully intend to pay for them. Could you believe it? They took me back to his office. And he, he pulled me by my ear. See, he is a mean man. And his wife seems like a bitch, too. Huh. So what was his office like? Was it full of vegetables? No, it was very clean. Well, there was one large cabbage on his desk, but that was it. Wow, that is really symbolic. Of what? Well, I don't know. I can never figure out my dreams. I had this dream once that I was in my underwear sitting on top of an oil derrick. Made no sense at all. Anyway, Dick Cheney sat down in his chair and he, oh, he suddenly had on a captain's hat. He looked like Captain Kangaroo. And he said, now, what are we going to do about this young lady? And he looked at me with his cold gray eyes, and I I just got incredibly horny. Yeah, cold gray eyes are so sexy. And I said, well, what would you like to do about this? Yeah. He smiled at me out of the side of his mouth. You know how he does that thing? And he said, you're a bad girl, aren't you? And I said, well, wouldn't you like to find out, Dickie? <laughs> you called him Dickie? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, well, you were totally coming on to him. It was only a dream. Yeah, but it's still Sachi. He's the vice president. Well, he's only half the vice president and half Captain Kangaroo. You have always had this thing for authority figures. Well, anyway, so he asked me if I was concealing any other vegetables on my person. And I said, well, why don't you just, you know, come over here and take a look, big boy. <laughs> and he got up from his desk. Real slow, mm, because of and his heart. he started sliding his hands all over me, groping my breasts and my butt and saying, no, hmm, nothing there. Nope, no, nothing there. Oh, my God, and this is getting really hot. You know? mm -hmm. And then he reached between my legs and he said, aha. Oh, and he had this look of innocent delight all over his face, just like a little boy. Oh, so cute. Did he say, ha, found your weapon of mass destruction? <laughs> no. Well, it's even, that doesn't even make sense. Well, you know, I mean, just as a joke. I heard he has a very dry sense of humor. 
Anyway, he pushed me back on the, his desk there. And he ripped open his shirt and his chest was just this mass of muscle. He just, suddenly we were both naked and he was on top of me and, and we were humping like rabbits and the cabbage was just bouncing all over the place. And he, whoa, he just kept saying, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. And he, he, he didn't even take his hat off. Huh. And then he tried to pull out, but I grabbed his, his small muscular ass and I held him in. And he finished inside me with this deep animal groan. It's always a nice moment. Oh, yeah. Well, I just felt this enormous national pride because I had given Dick Cheney the ultimate pleasure. And then, before I knew it, I was on a bus upstate New York in a completely different dream. And that was it. I never saw him again. Huh. Gee, imagine if he got you pregnant. He's pro-life, you know. This is all very disturbing, because what does this say about me? <laughs> that I would even dream about screwing Dick Cheney. It is all stress-related. I'm telling you. You are projecting your personal anxieties out on a global scale, and your vice president is doing what he can to comfort you. That's his job. Well, every time I see him on, you know, meet the press or something, I'm going to feel queasy because he, like, he knows things about me. Yeah, well, you know a thing or two about him too, right? <laughs> God, you are so lucky, Sachi. I never dream about anything. You know, rockets and horses and talking cigars. That's all I ever get. You need more stress in your life. Mm. Anyway, I never go to Pathmark anymore. At King Collins, you don't even need a shopper's card. And the carrots are very reasonable. <laughs>